From the day I wrote my first MIT App Inventor project in high school, it took me 10 years to become a full-time software engineer at Bolt. And that was six years to my first internship at Schlumberger, another year to break into big tech at Microsoft, and one final year to get into startups at Gusto. And this was because I followed the traditional path to software engineering. I studied computer science, I did some internships, and then I recruited for full-time opportunities. But can you become a software engineer way faster? 100%. I've spent countless hours studying theoretical algorithms that I'll never use at the job, and I've paid six figures in tuition to sit in some college classes that never provided value. So I often ask myself, if I could go back in time knowing what I know today, what would I do differently? And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about today. I'll remove all the fluff and tell you the fastest way to go from zero to full-time software engineer in three to six months. And throughout this video, I'll share the three major mistakes every beginner makes on their software engineering journey. So stay tuned for those. Thanks to Udemy for making this video possible. The first thing you'll need to do is pick a programming language. And in the context of getting a job as soon as possible, here's my criteria. We want a language that is easy to learn in that the syntax is intuitive and it feels like English. But because we only have three to six months, we don't care if this language has the most real world use cases. We just care that there are enough applications to keep us busy and to teach us the important programming fundamentals. Finally, we don't want a language that is verbose because we simply don't have the time to write hundreds of lines of code to accomplish very simple tasks. Many of you might have guessed the programming language I'd recommend. If you're trying to learn coding and get a job as quickly as possible, Python is definitely the way to go. It's very easy to write, and for the most part, the syntax reads like English. It's used in everything from scripting to full stack applications to data science. And it's one of the least verbose languages out there. You can accomplish some incredibly complicated tasks in just a few lines of code. This will come in handy when you're learning the language, but also when you end up doing technical coding interviews where you'll only have about 45 minutes to finish the problem. With me personally, I started off by learning Java during my AP Computer Science class. And though it taught me all the theoretical principles like object-oriented programming and abstraction and inheritance, it was kind of boring. Java is really tedious to write and it's hard to get up and running. So I'm telling you to start with Python because it's easy to write and it's versatile. But even more importantly, it's a lot of fun. You can go from nothing to seeing Hello World on the terminal in less than five minutes. And you can build with it so quickly. People often underestimate the importance of enjoying what you're doing and having fun. And you're in this for the long haul. You're learning coding now to get a job in three to six months and become a full-time software engineer and potentially devote a whole career to that endeavor. And if you're not enjoying what you're doing, you're gonna burn out. Other languages definitely have their benefits, but you can pick them up later. Remember, the important thing here is not that you know everything. It's that you know just enough to get that job in three to six months. And then you have the rest of your career to keep growing. Having solid Python fundamentals will allow you to accomplish all of this and much more. Now that we agree Python is the programming language to learn, let's talk about how to learn it. And this is also where most beginner programmers make the first major mistake. And that mistake is that they learn by watching, not by doing. Most beginner programmers go to Udemy, they look up Python courses, they filter by reviews, they find something highly rated, something that's 60 plus hours of content, and then they watch the entire course like it's a TV show. But unlike their favorite TV show, they don't finish it, they don't get to the end. And that's because 60 hours of recorded content doesn't equate to 60 hours of work. You're gonna wanna pause, rewind, rewatch, Google things, try to really understand what's going on. That's like watching a pianist play for 100 hours and then sitting down yourself and expecting to be able to play for Elise on your first try. It doesn't work like that, you learn by doing. So what's the right way to learn? I'll tell you. First, open up some online learning platform. I'd highly recommend Udemy because the courses there are truly top class. Type in Python, filter by the beginner level, and find a course that is highly rated and has enough content. And finally, check out the course plan. And this is really important. There are three things you want to look for. First, make sure that there are actual hands-on exercises so you can apply the knowledge you'll be learning. And second, be sure that there are some mini projects that use real world technologies. And third, and probably most importantly, Try to figure out if this course is something that interests you, if it excites you, if it's something that you'll enjoy. Going back to the concept of fun, if you're not gonna enjoy creating a snake game or writing out a password manager app, then you're not gonna finish the course. It'll feel like a drag. And yes, I know that there are tons of free resources out there and YouTube itself has some great content. Even on Udemy, you can filter by price and find some courses that are free. But I personally believe in the value of putting your money where your goal is. By paying for something, you now have skin in the game and you're more likely to come back and keep going because no one likes to waste money. If anything, treat this as an investment in yourself, in your future. One of the best investments you'll ever make. 
The amazing thing with Udemy is that they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you do take a course, you do the work, but you still believe you didn't get any value out of it, you'll get a full refund. But if you do take the course and you enjoy it, which I'm sure you will, you get lifetime access, which is awesome. Everyone asks me what course I recommend, and I'll make a more detailed video about this later when I go through all the courses and give you my top pick. For now, I don't think you can go wrong with Dr. Angela Yu's 100 Days of Code Python course. It seems very comprehensive, and it has some great reviews. I put a link in the description below, so check it out. And remember, practice makes perfect. So once you finish up the course, you have some experience under your belt, it's time to look for more projects. I'd highly encourage you to sign up for a hackathon to keep yourself accountable. So after 24 or 36 hours of continuous work, you can demo your awesome work to some judges. And the point here is not to win prizes because you probably won't with just tic-tac-toe. The point is that you've developed something and you have something to show for your efforts. Again, hackathons are totally optional, but personally, I feel like they were instrumental to my success. All right, so where do you find these additional project ideas? Well, there's a really cool channel on YouTube called Free Code Camp, and I'd highly encourage you to subscribe. They have some really cool videos around coding. I'm personally a really big fan of their 12 Beginner Python Projects course, where they list out 12 Python projects, really fun ones too, like Tic-Tac-Toe, Sudoku, Minesweeper, and they're ordered from easiest to hardest. So again, the barrier of entry is really low. You start, you can do a little bit, and then you keep getting better and better. With your newfound Python knowledge, you're ready to dive right in. So far, we've talked about learning how to code, but what about the getting a job as fast as possible part of this video? Well, in many ways, all the work you've done so far, all the projects you've worked on, the stuff you've built with real world technologies, that's what a software engineer would do. So you're like a software engineer without the official title. All we gotta do is get that job now. Because think about it. You used an integrated development environment, an IDE, like VS Code. You used a terminal, Git, like version control. You put your code somewhere, maybe GitHub. And this is all the stuff real world software engineers do. And most importantly, you wrote code, a lot of code. You wrote buggy code, and then you debugged it, you fixed it, you improved it, and then you rinsed and repeated. And that's all that I do as a full-time software engineer. And as you build out your projects, you'll think of edge cases and all the things your real users will do when they're interacting with your application. And this is all stuff I think about every day as a full-time software engineer. So by learning how to code, you're also learning how to do the job. Once you finish a project, make sure to upload all the source code to GitHub, where you can slowly start building out your coding portfolio. Linking your GitHub on your resume is also a great way to show experience and initiative, two things recruiters absolutely love. So the chances of you securing a first round interview at a top tech company will be way higher. Once you have a bunch of personal projects, a banger resume, and you feel confident in your programming abilities, it's time to apply for software engineering opportunities. But wait, before you're ready to pass technical coding interviews, you'll have to interview prep. You see, in an ideal world, your programming experience would speak for itself. You just show up, write some code, and get the job. But in the real world, companies like to play games with us. Tech companies love to ask a very specific style of interview questions revolving around data structures and algorithms. And if you went to college, you probably remember in your first year an exact course titled Data Structures and Algorithms. It's a bunch of theoretical stuff that you'll probably never use again, but we're trying to get a job and it's necessary, so unfortunately, we're gonna have to learn this too. Lucky for us, there are some really great classes on Udemy that allow us to ramp up really quickly. The most important thing here is that whatever course you pick, you finish it, you keep going. Since we're already proficient in Python, I'd highly recommend you check out the Master the Coding interview course, which looks pretty solid. You'll learn all about trees and graphs and binary search, and I know all this to you probably sounds like an alien language right now, but I promise, once you finish the course, you'll be a pro. All of this will make sense. But understanding the theory isn't enough. Again, we need to practice. We need to keep on doing. LeetCode is a great free platform where you can practice easy, medium, and hard coding questions asked by actual tech companies. The great thing with LeetCode is that it's a self-contained environment. So they provide you with an IDE and you can code in any language that you want. They also have an automated test runner that runs hundreds of tests upon every code submission. So you can be confident when your code is correct. Make an account and dedicate yourself to doing one question a day. Start with the easy question, spending 30 to 45 minutes fully implementing it by yourself. Then if you're stuck, you can look up a hint. And if you still make no progress, you can look up the solution. If you do look up the solution, make sure you fully understand what it's saying. Close out the solution and then try to re-implement the answer again by yourself. Once you're able to confidently solve leak code easies in about 45 minutes, you can now move on to medium questions. There's also hard questions, but they're very rarely asked. So I mostly spend most of my time on mediums. There's no magic number of lead code problems after which you're suddenly ready to pass technical interviews. Instead, I focus most of my times on doing groups of questions, doing array questions, tree questions, graph questions, and understanding the patterns. So if you ever get a question, you know how to solve it. And this is actually the second big mistake beginner programmers make. 
They don't know when to stop practicing and when to start interviewing. They do too many practice questions. The truth is, interview experience matters just as much as all the theory you're learning if you want to be able to solve anything that they throw at you. So I'd start interviewing as soon as possible. Schedule the companies you don't care about first. So if you bomb the interviews, it's okay. It's no biggie. The more interviews you do, the better you'll get at it. So as you continue doing one question a day, I'd schedule one to two interviews a week. Again, start with the companies you don't care about. And then as you get better and better, you'll start acing the technical rounds, by which point you can schedule the companies you do care about, all those top tech companies, those dream places you wanna work at. If you're lucky, you'll pass all your technical interviews on the first try. But for most of us, the recruiting journey is a process filled with many ups and downs. There's some interviews where you're lucky and you get a question you've seen before, or you do a simple pattern match and solve it. But there'll be other times when you're sitting there for 40 minutes with no idea how to solve the problem. You're absolutely stumped. And you walk out of the interview dejected, demotivated. It's okay, it happened to me, it happens to all of us. And this is where most beginners make the third and arguably biggest mistake. They quit early, they give up, and they start believing that the job search or coding just isn't for them that there's some college grad that is smarter than them. I've been there, I felt that intense imposter syndrome, but none of this is true. In fact, this video has taught you basically everything I learned in college and through my personal experiences. So you're at no disadvantage. Keep your head high, keep your mental strong, keep practicing leak code mediums and taking more interviews. Focus on learning from the rejections and thinking about what you could have done better and then go home and implement the same problem again. Make sure you fully understand the solution and then put that rejection in the past and focus on the next interview. At some point, I promise you'll pass the majority of your interviews and it'll all be worth it. Remember, consistency is key. It makes all the difference. That's all I have. Till next time, cheers.